We should be there by 7 tomorrow morning. Uh, ask him how the trout are fighting, huh? Okay, relax. Weston wants to know how the trout are. You've been telling they're biting real good, Mr. Morris. Yeah. Okay, I'll see you guys at the lodge in the morning. Okay, bye. You're not taking anyone out this weekend. I told you I wanted to go to the state fair. These guys pay good, so I need the money. Anyway, the fair will be here all summer. Well, maybe I won't. If you think I'm going to stay around this place and count those flies again this weekend, you have another think coming. Oh, come on, honey, I promise. Get away from me, you slob. I'm going whether you like it or not. You're staying right here. You ain't got enough money to go by yourself. I'm going out and get my stuff ready. For the weekend. Mm -hmm. What do you mean you can't get away? You've done it before. You wouldn't want me to give out certain information now, would you? That's better. I'll meet you in an hour. <laughs> several years, whenever Lieutenant Weston and I could clear a weekend, we'd head for our favorite vacation spot, where with our guide, Joe Slate, we'd exchange the pressures of criminal and corporate law for the pleasures of a well-stocked trout stream. I hear a car. I've got some guests. I better take care of them. I asked you a question, boy. I told you I never left here last night. If you don't believe me, I'm sorry. But it's the truth. I swear it. Okay, Frank. Oh, uh, hello, Mr. Maris. Mr. Wesson. Frank. Nice to see you gentlemen again. Oh, it's good to be back, I'll tell you. How you been, Frank? Oh, pretty good. Hey, you got the whole place to yourselves. Nobody do until tomorrow. Good, I won't have to shave or dress up. Yeah, with nobody else here, who are you going to tell your fish stories to? Remember last time? Honest, it was this big if it was an inch. All right, go ahead. Laugh it up, you two. You just wait, I'll double your catch. No, oh, my broken line, you will. Joe buy it? Oh, that's right. You haven't heard yet, have you? Heard what, Frank? Right? Joe's in jail. Killed his wife. That's impossible. I talked to Joe last night. Well, I found her body on the trail in back of their place early this morning. He shot her. Joe wouldn't have done a thing like that. He's the gentlest guy in the world. The way he talked about his wife. He idolized the ground she walked on. Maybe so. From what else you used to tell me? She sure couldn't stand him. Where is he? What jail? Sheriff's office in town. Any particular rooms you want? No. Frank, same setup as before, right? Uh, yeah. Let's go and see what we can do for John. As often as we've been fishing around here, we've never been to the village. Looks quiet, doesn't it? Sure does. Howdy. 
What can I do for you? My name is Herbert Maris, and this is John Weston. Oh, pleased to know you. I'm Sheriff Davis. Uh, how can I help you? Oh, we understand you have Joe Slade under arrest, Sheriff. Would you mind telling us what happened? Oh, he just finally killed his wife. Oh? Well, did he admit it? No, not yet. He's still in pretty bad shape. But uh, tonight or tomorrow, he'll talk. Sheriff, you said that Joe finally killed his wife. What do you mean? We always had the impression that he was very much in love with her. Well, maybe he was, but uh, did you ever meet Esther? No. Well, she was a pretty thing, but no good. You know, always running around, going out with any guy that had a few bucks to spend on her. Say, Maris, seems like... Hey, aren't you the attorney? That's right. And Mr. Weston here is a police lieutenant. But we're not here officially. Joe just happens to be a very old friend of ours. Well, I'm mighty proud to know you two. Come on in and sit down. Thank you. Oh, go ahead, sit down. Exactly how much of a case do you have against Joe, Sheriff? Well, I figure the worst he can get is a second-degree conviction, if any. Well, let's not convict him so fast, Sheriff. Joe's a friend of ours, and we'd like to know what kind of proof you've got. <laughs> well, you got something there. Well, yeah, they was fighting, and Esther walked out. She had this and was all dolled up when they found her on a path about three miles back of the place where they lived. Rifle bullet through the heart. Uh, here's the coroner's report. Killed instantly, bullet fired from about 30 yards. Time of death approximately 9 p.m. Yeah. And the trouble is, Joey got no alibi. His rifle's missing. He says that somebody must have stolen it out of his garage last night. Who found the body, sir? A couple of spooners. They called me about 11 o'clock. I took two of my deputies out and was looking around. I found Joe about a mile from where she was killed. He says he was looking for her. Seems to me your case is pretty circumstantial so far, Sheriff. I think I have it pretty well figured out, Mr. Maris. Can we talk to Joe? Why, sure. I can't see no harm in that. Wait a minute. I'll get it. Bring in Joe. The kind of girl you said she was, isn't it possible someone else might have wanted to kill her? I told you she was out after guys with dope. Like traveling salesmen and tourists. There ain't been none of them around here lately. I... <laughs> well, as, as long as you're here and you wanted to go fishing, I, I can get you another guide. We're not interested in fishing right now, Sheriff. Hiya, Joe. Here, sit down. We just heard about your wife, Joe. We're very sorry. Somebody killed us. Joe, do you know who did it? Who would uh, want to do a thing like that? She was so young, so pretty. Do you know of any other men that might have been seeing her, Joe? Other men? She was my wife. She wouldn't do a thing like that. There's the scars. Proof of the fight I was telling you about. The way I've got it figured is he blew his top and killed her. And then went into shock when he realized what he'd done. Joe, we want to help you. Try hard and think. Do you know who could have done this to your wife? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um. He's in a tram. I don't think we'll get anything out of him. Thanks, sir. All right. Take him back. Well, I guess that's about it, isn't it? Have you questioned anybody else, sir? Well, of course. I've questioned everyone. Esther used to hang around that barn grill quite a lot, didn't she? Who told you that? You did. At least from your description of her, I'd say she was pretty well known over there. Well, yeah, she did go over there once in a while. But I already checked with Noah Hawkins. He's the owner. And he's got a perfect alibi. Uh, maybe we ought to have a talk with Noah. Yeah, of course. It will ease your mind, Danny. 
I'll take you across. Oh, now, wait a minute, Sheriff. We've already taken up too much of your time. Oh, that's okay. I got nothing else to do now, anyhow. No, no way. You had plenty of money to throw away. A... So don't give me that you don't have any money for the kids. Hello, Noah and Mary. How are you? <laughs> I have a couple of gentlemen I want you to meet. Uh, this is Mr. Maris, a lawyer, and Lieutenant Weston of the city police. They're friends of Joe's. And this is Noah Hawkins and his wife, Mary. Mrs. Hawkins. Mr. Hawkins. I just stopped by to get some money from Noah. I'm, I'm taking the kids to the fair. Mm. Is this enough? Oh, that's plenty. I'll, I'll see what supplies you need for the kitchen while I'm out. I was just telling these gentlemen that Esther used to come in here once in a while. Oh, I understand you knew Esther quite well. Uh, well, she was a pretty good customer. I already told them that you have a perfect alibi. You see, he was at home all last night. Can you prove that, Mr. Hoffman? Oh, yeah, sure. My wife will tell you. I never left the house. Watched TV till about 11 o'clock and then went to bed. Sure, ask his wife. How often did you take Esther out, Noah? Oh, wait a minute, Lieutenant. Sheriff, why didn't you let him answer? After all, if Mr. Hawkins has an alibi, I'm sure he has nothing to hide. I think it's a logical question, Mr. Hawkins. If the sheriff believes you need an alibi, apparently you did know Esther pretty well. Well, sure, I, I got nothing to hide. Maybe I did drive her home once or twice. You know, when she was under the weather, I'd do that for any good customer. Come on now, Noah. She was more than just another customer. And when you drove her home, you didn't go exactly right home, did you? How come you're picking on me? I'm not the only guy in town who knew her. Noah, you don't need to answer no more questions. Now, I don't like to throw my weight around, but you got no jurisdiction around here. I thought you wanted to solve this case, Sheriff. I think I already have. No use involving a whole lot of innocent people. Excuse me, gentlemen. No, I made a list of the things that you need. I'll bring them back. Nice meeting you, Mr. Merritt. Mrs. Hawkins. Nice meeting you, Lieutenant. Pleasure, Mrs. Hawkins. Goodbye, Noah. Sheriff. Goodbye, Murray. Well, uh, no sense taking up any more of your time, Mr. Hawkins. We might as well be on our way. Yeah, well, it was sure nice meeting you, gentlemen. I'll show you to your car. Oh, Mr. Merritt, I'm sorry I blew up like that in there. You see, my, my nerves are kind of edgy. We ain't never had a killing around here before. We understand, sir. So, is there anything else I can show you? No, I guess not. Thanks, sir. Well, if you decide you want another guide, you just call me. Thanks. We'll do that, sir. Mrs. Hawkins palmed off when you shook hands with her. Maybe you're not much of a fisherman, but I've got to admit you're a pretty fair cop. I wanted to make sure that we got rid of the sheriff first. You know, Herbie, he knows a lot more than he's saying. What's it say? Meet me in back of the big restaurant five miles east on the main highway. Kids are having a soda. I've only got a minute. Noah didn't do it. It's the truth. He was home last night. Mrs. Hawkins, you didn't go to all this trouble just to tell us that. The way Noah was acting, I didn't think he'd just let it go at that. He and Esther, well, they knew each other better than he's willing to let on. It doesn't prove anything, except that maybe he was weak. The point is, he wasn't the only one. There were others who knew her just as good, better maybe. Who? Al Shanley, the gas station man up the road. Frank Davies, the room clerk at the lodge. Frank's uncle needn't act so high and mighty. He used to go out with her whenever she'd let him. Frank's uncle? Who's he? I thought you knew. Jeremy. Sheriff Davies. Oh, Mary. There you are. Your kids are looking for you. 
Okay, Jeremy. Well, we'd uh, better be getting back to the lot. Oh, that's funny. That's where I'm going. Fine. The deeper we tried to get into the facts surrounding Esther Slate's murder, the more evident one fact became. Sheriff Davies was trying almost desperately to keep something from us. Yeah, maybe he resents us on general principles. I doubt if he'd go to that much trouble if he just resented outsiders. What's his reputation? I don't know much about him personally, but I understand he runs an honest department. I remember reading about a couple of burglaries took place at the lodge last year, but there's very little local crime here. I'd like to know how well he knew Esther. Me too, but how do we find out without maybe getting Mrs. Hawkins in trouble? Well, one thing's for sure. He's not going to let us out of his sight from now on in. Uh, he can't follow both of us. Split up? Why not? See what happens. Why not? Sheriff, if it's not too much of an imposition, I'd like to take a look at the spot where Esther was killed. Well, sure, anything to apply. Tell you what, John, uh, why don't you go ahead with the sheriff? Uh, I'm expecting a call from a client. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, uh, mind if we use your car? Oh, be my guest. <laughs> oh, hi, Mr. Maris. Hello, Frank. Say, I lined up another guy for you. He'll be over this afternoon. Who told you to do that, your uncle? No, I just thought that... Well, there's nothing more you can do for Joe, is there? Well, I don't know, Frank. You think he's guilty? Well, that's what they say. This morning when you told me Joe was arrested, you said that Esther used to tell you that she couldn't stand him. Oh, sure. Well, what I meant was, uh, once in a while I'd go into Noah's bar in town. Uh, Mrs. Slate was usually there. Well, anybody who sat next to her, she'd usually talk to Armin Leg off. That's how I come to know. I, I didn't mean I was a friend of hers. Were you an enemy? Oh, are you kidding or something, Mr. Maris? I hardly knew her. I can't divulge my source of information, of course, but I have it on very good authority that uh, you used to meet Esther often. Uh, who told you that? Al Shanley? You call him a good authority? Everybody in town knows he's a liar. Well, I'm not saying who told me, but this person claims that he can prove that you met Esther. Wait till I tell my uncle that Al's spreading lies about me. He'll take care of him. Jeremy's not going to let any no good liar get me in trouble. You know why he told you all this, don't you? Well, because it's the truth, I guess. I'll tell you the truth. He's trying to frame me because he used to like Esther and she'd never go out with him. I stopped taking the shortcut round by a station because Esther said she couldn't stand the same stare at her. He used to scare her. He said he saw somebody come by that night, Frank. Oh, he's a liar. He hasn't opened nights yet. Yeah, he closes the station at 7 sharp. He, he wasn't anywhere around there. How do you know, Frank? Did you take the shortcut? Now, listen, Mr. Maris. I got an alibi for last night. My uncle's a sheriff, and he believes me. But I'll tell you one thing. If anybody killed Esther, it was Al Shanley. I thought you were all agreed it was Joe. Now, look, quit trying to confuse me. I'm wise to lawyer tricks. I don't have to talk to you. All right, if you'd rather, talk to your uncle, then. Looks like your big city policeman couldn't find anything I didn't. I've just been having a little talk with your nephew, Frank. He seems pretty upset about something. Upset? Uh-huh. Uh, what's up? Tell you, let me see how fast you can drive. Your name, Al Shanley. Uh, that's right. What, what can I do for you? We understand you knew Esther Slate. Who didn't? How well? Well, well enough to uh, be sociable, if you know what I mean.
don't know what you're asking me all these questions for. I've already talked with the sheriff. I, I can prove where I was last night. Oh. I left here at 7, same as always. Drove over to the fair. I've got all kinds of witnesses can tell you where I, that I was there from a little before 9 till closing. You know, Al, my hunch is you might be able to help us find us just killer. I thought it was already set for Joe Slate to take the rap. We don't think he did it. Do you? Of course he didn't. But he'll take the rap anyway. Really? What's your guess, Al? It's no guess, I know. Only I can't prove nothing, and I'm not dumb enough to name names. But I'll, I'll give you the details if you want to fill in the characters. Okay. A couple of burglaries at the lodge last year. Nothing big, maybe three or four thousand bucks worth of jewelry and dough taken. But the burglar was never caught. Were there any suspects? Nobody without an alibi. Anyway, not long after that, Esther and this certain party start meeting whenever Joe's away on a camping trip. He starts giving her presents, spending a lot of dough on her. How do you know? She come in here bragging about it. Guess she figured I'd like to get into the competition. And did you? No, sir, not when I seen what was going on. He, he used to meet her over there. It's a shortcut between her place and his. I used to see them all the time. I hear she was killed on the path last night. I knew right away it had to be this guy who did it. He was the only one she'd meet on that path. Al, do you have any idea why he killed her? Why, she knew he'd committed the burglaries. Maybe he was afraid she'd spill the beans. Behind the car. It's coming down. We're like sitting ducks. I got a loaded 22 in the garage on the bench if you want to try for it. It's kind of rough trying to make it in the open. Well, I guess we have no choice. Wait a minute, John. I think I can keep down pretty low over there. Let me see if I can draw his fire. Then you make a run for it. All right, but it's too risky. Lots better than dashing out there cold. But wait till you see that he's got his eye on me. I didn't want to kill you. I followed him from the lodge. He had Joe's gun. I still couldn't believe that he was the one that done it. And then I... I realized that he was out to kill Al. Maybe all of you. I warned him about that woman. I even went to see her many times myself to beg her to leave him alone. She was just no good. And he... he could have made something of himself. He was just like my son. Well, anyway, now I... I don't have to arrest him. There must be some consolation in that, huh? Thank you. 